How's it going everyone? Welcome back for another set of tips on how to improve in Space Engineers. We're going to be working from more basic to more advanced again, starting off with a few things to edit from last video, thanks to some great feedback that you guys provided. Also, I'm going to be pinning a comment with timestamps for the start of each tip, as well as any edits that I want to put out about them. With that said, let's get started. So in the last video, I mentioned that you can teleport your engineer while you're in spectator mode using control shift when actually it's control spacebar. Uh, I was pressing control spacebar while I said that, but words are hard sometimes. So now you know, just in case it should be control spacebar to teleport. Another edit is when talking about these LCDs for connecting stairs. Uh, this is still a valid solution, but it was mentioned to me that the neon tubes down block is actually probably an even better way to do this. Uh, these neon tubes weren't in the game when I jotted down this note and I hadn't thought to go back and check if maybe there was a better block for the job. but. This is probably what I will be using from now on, so I want to pass that off uh, as soon as possible to you guys, just to let you know. Probably much better. Also, when you compare the PCU costs, the neon tubes is just one, whereas the LCD block is 50, so that's kind of a no-brainer right there. And then just showing one more use for these. I just mocked up a little room right here and you say you want to put some couches in front of a window so we go down and grab our window block but we can't actually put it right here because there's no connection point so we could just use those neon tubes on the side to give us our connection and they end up looking like nice little brackets holding them on I would probably still stick these LCDs underneath just because it looks good as well, but you know, go crazy, whatever your preference, just passing that on. So last time I touched on light settings and how you don't need a lot of lights to light up a room, uh, but I didn't quite hit light management as much as I wanted to. So just real quick, I'll go through uh, how I keep track of all the lights that I have. So I'll start off and just throw a couple on the ceiling, and these will be part of the ceiling light group. So what I'm going to do is grab all the lights I just put down, put them in a ceiling group, save, and then I'm going to not show them in the terminal anymore so they go away. And then I can take some lights over here. We'll call those the entrance lights. So then same thing. Take those lights, put them in a group, save, and get them out of there. And then we can say floor lights down the middle here. And this is something that really anybody who makes a big ship or a station is going to deal with is eventually your control panel gets filled up with lights and you start forgetting which ones were where, uh, where they came from. So this is a really easy way to clear up your control panel and then if you want to adjust your lights um, I can go here for the ceiling ones, give them a nice big radius intensity, I'll just leave them white. The entrance lights, maybe I'll want them to be kind of a sci-fi blue color the floor lights, maybe I want them to be kind of more orangish yellow, give them radius, lower intensity. So then whenever I want to change a specific group, then I can just go in there, find the group, change the settings. And then if I want to delete something from the group, maybe I put too many, um, that's easy enough. You just delete the light you don't want. If you wanted to add something to a group though, then if you've been setting it up that way the whole time, then the lights you want to add will be the only interior lights that you can see. So I wanted those to go on the floor. I'll 
click on the floor lights and then hold control, click these two lights and click save. So now it adds them to the group and I'll get them out of the control panel. And I can just click on the settings that the rest of those lights in there already had and that should update the new lights that I just put in with those same settings. So really easy way to stay organized when you're building and uh, save you a lot of headaches later, that's for sure. So next we're going to be talking about hinges and more specifically how to attach them in mass uh, the easy way. Hinges are kind of disappointingly weak compared to their rotor friends, but uh, they make up for it by being really easy to attach like this. The only thing you really want to pay attention to is these tick marks. Uh, you can see, if I can point it this way, there's a tick mark on the left side, but none on the right side. And that just gives you a clue as to which direction is going to be positive and negative. So as long as your tick marks are all on the same side, then this should be easy to do. So I'll drag a line of hinges right here and then go through and delete their heads. And I know this was my original, so I'm not going to delete that one. And then I can go on to the grid that I wanted to connect all the hinges to, put the heads on that part, and then I'll come back here grab all the new hinges and tell them to attach. And my original hinge had a velocity of two, so we'll change all these guys, give them a little torque, braking torque, velocity of two. And now if I reverse them all, it should open up, give it much more strength, clean up the gap, and just look nicer overall. So that is how you work with multiple hinges. This next one is going to be talking about those neon tubes again, but not really in the way that they were intended to be used. So if I make their color a lot darker and just change it to gray, uh, they're going to lose their emissive texture and start to just look like pipes. And then they have this really great uh, truss scaffolding kind of look to the back of them. And so I was thinking this would look really nice as, I guess, a just support structure for various things. They pair up really well with these catwalk blocks with the rails. And so you have kind of a tiny little tower here. Uh, you have a larger tower on this side. Maybe it'll be out in front of your land base, just a little guard post. Uh, it could also go inside of stations or ships if you wanted it to use it maybe as like a suspension for the ceiling. Um, I like how it wraps around the bottom and actually looks like it's holding the weight of these catwalks. Or you could use it as support for maybe uh, an outcropping on, on the edge of the wall here. And then even putting it on top of these half wall covers gives it just a little bit of extra detail to your railings here. And so you can just, you know, a whole bunch of different, different ways to use this. Uh, I've mocked up this little setting here as kind of a hangar bay. Um, and really it comes to life when you start using the neon tubes as the support structure here. These ones that are made out of the uh, three-way, let's see, what's it called? Neon tubes U-shape. So I just stack those in a line so that it actually makes a box when you put them together. And that just has a great look to it, really adds to the small uh, ground down supports that were already there. And in the back here, I have them supporting this catwalk because I used uh, half blocks for these pillars and I couldn't actually put the catwalk against them. And so what started out as just a quick fix on a way to get the catwalk to stay there, I uh, ended up keeping it just because it looks so nice as a way to support it going around. So just passing that one on, um, 
using blocks in ways that they weren't really meant to be used is, I think, a huge, huge way to grow in this game. Uh, it's always fun to kind of have that aha moment where you think, oh, this would go really great here. Kind of like using those tubes to put under the stairs. Next up is going to be uh, a problem that I ran into while I was building, and that's uh, a nice way to connect these two catwalks together while still being able to either move along this one or along this one or go in between. Um, so the best way I found for this was using this half stair feature. And I don't use these uh, hardly at all. This is probably actually the first time I've ever tried using this block just because normally you would just use uh, a full stair if you wanted to change elevation. But for this one, we can put our half stair here. And as it is, it's, it's not really a great fix. I mean, am I supposed to jump across this gap or something? Um, but we can clean that up using rails and catwalks. So if I just grab uh, the normal catwalk, then I can put that underneath here to at least uh, give it some floor. And then for the rail, uh, I can't put it here, but I can put it on this side. So I'll put it on this side and then on the other side as well, just to help blend it in to the space and make it not so noticeable that it's on the outside. I can put one more rail on this side, once again, to keep the look uniform. And then on this top half here, uh, I need a block that can just go across half the space that you can run on. And so, once again, we're gonna use the rail and then do this trick to cover up the siding. Oh, not like that. And so now, even though this has kind of a funky gap here, you can run across it just fine. Uh, it's totally functional. You can go down to the next level, run around this catwalk, and it, it just gives a fun little uh, transition point in between the two, and you're able to clean up the sides using those other blocks. So a fun little fix to the problem, and I just wanted to pass that one along as well. The final thing that we're going to talk about is using sensors and gyros together in order to uh, kind of create a scriptless animation function. Um, so we have this block, and you can see I just stepped into the sensor field, and he's just going to keep watching, keep turning himself towards me. Uh, if I go behind, you can kind of see. This is just two sensors and two gyros on override. Uh, right now they both see me and they're both trying to turn so it doesn't move. If I just move into one of the sensors field of view, then the other one will turn it around and it will point towards me. So obviously this sign is just kind of a fun little way to feel like the world's a little bit alive. But we can go uh, further, in, further on this. Um, back here. So here's a quick little freebie. Uh, if you have sun rotation enabled in the world and then you hold Alt F10, then you can change the time of day to night. And I just wanted to show the function of this guy. So I added some spotlights to him. And so now if I was working and I didn't want to manually have my light source, then this guy, he's kind of like the, the eye in Pixar, is just going to follow me around, keep me lit up, just be my little buddy up there. And the way that he's working is using that same, um, using these two gyros in order to spin towards me. And then on the top, it uses one gyro to elevate, and then, or actually it's this gyro, which will elevate and this gyro is just checked override all the time so that it 
uh, stabilizes the movement because uh, this thing wants to fall in gravity. And so I actually lock the hinge once it sees me. I have a, one more sensor up there so that it will lock the hinge and not fall down. But I think if I can get out of his field of view, you can see he falls down and then he raises back up to, to see me again. So that's fun. You could have, you know, five of these around your base. Maybe turn them into a security feature or something, but I just like having a little light that follows me around. Uh, I'll transition over to a way that I've used this in kind of a more uh, aesthetic sense. So here we are in a world that I've been using to basically just try out new ideas. And I've used this sensor gyro combination to give this room over here a little more life. Uh, specifically with these arms that are hanging from the ceiling. So as I come into the room, actually all three of them here are just going to follow me around, uh, continuously try and point towards me. And it just makes you feel like they're kind of alive in a sense. Um, like they're wondering what you're doing here in their space and that you should probably leave. <laughs> but uh, you can see if I go into spectator, that it's just gonna be that same familiar system that I have hidden up in the ceiling here. We've got our sensors, we've got our gyros, and that just helps them to see me, watch me, and I will actually leave this room because they still kind of creep me out. So I've tried using this setup as a turret system, but the gyros are just so delayed. Uh, it, it really can't track a player very well. It probably couldn't even hit a big ship. But one other way to kind of expand on this system is instead of making it a passive searching system where it just looks for the player, you can turn it into one where the engineer is directing all of the movement. So I've set up this pad and it's got sensors underneath. They all have a really small area that they're looking up at so that they only perform an action when you stand right on top of them. So I put little signs on here and I can walk onto my pad and it will move if I stand on top of the arrow right here. So it swings around, say I want to get to this part of the base, I'll try and stop it, move a little bit more. And then I also have sensors that can move the piston that it's connect to up and down just uh, retracting and um, reversing that piston. And now I can get up here to my little area. And then when I want to go back around, I can swing it back around until it's at the other base. You try and time it so it stops right, hit the down button, it goes down. And obviously this is a simple example, but you could, if you really wanted to, uh, rig this up so you can control every action from your ship without having to actually press any buttons except WASD and kind of treat it like your own crazy DDR dance pad in order to uh, control whatever you've made. So I thought that was uh, a really fun basically way to implement this and I probably should give it a lot more thought because it's just really cool to be able to do things without having to press any buttons at all. So I'm sure you guys will come up with something crazy real soon. And then, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. So that's all the tips I've got for this video. I am quickly filling up my ideas page with more as they come to me, but it's been awesome to hear you guys' feedback. Um, I've even learned some new things from the feedback which is fun and then just hearing that even some some old vets that have been playing for years are learning some new things as well uh, it's just awesome to help out the community and get some help in return so yeah i'm looking forward to the next video and i will catch you guys next time see ya